A breakout board is a miniature circuit board. It's used in prototyping. You can use it in a finished product, but then it's more like a module than a breakout board. You have your professional breakout boards, where you have something mounted onto a little bit of a board, and pins that come off the end that are used to connect to your breadboard. A homemade breakout board, especially one done by an amateur, looks somewhat different, but it is no less useful. In fact, it may be more useful, because this lets you do something. This lets you do something and you learn how to be better at electronics while you make it. Now, it's not going to be useful for me to show you drilling and cutting wood, soldering on a board, plenty of videos out there like that. Mechanical skills are best taught by somebody who's not learning them. But I'm going to go over what boards I'm making and how I'm making them, at least after I've done so, because I think they're good ideas. The ideas stem from me doing breadboard work and having to remake the same circuit over and over and over for part of another circuit that's not even connected. So we'll begin with the first one I made, which is buttons. So the idea here is you have four buttons mounted on a board, nice and easy to press and settles on the table, which is great because while these buttons do fit in a breadboard, they don't fit easily. Uh, it's fairly likely to rip apart the holes in your breadboard. So basically this ends up being something like a common cathode or common anode. Obviously switches, buttons don't have cathodes and anodes, but you have one pin that's going to be your input or output, your power or your positive, negative, whatever. And then there are four pins, one for each button. And they're nice and color-coded, if you can see the colors. So just hooking up wires, you now have buttons, quick and easy inputs. Let's look at a quick circuit diagram. So I have four switches, momentary switches, also known as buttons. And it's entirely possible this camera is focusing and unfocusing rapidly, and it's very annoying. I haven't figured that part out yet. So my apologies, try to not get nauseous. So the way the wiring is, is quite simple. All four on one end go into a junction, and this is a pin. I suppose I'll just indicate it like this. That is a pin on the board. And the four out here, furthermore, are pins on the board. So which way the signal is going through the switches is up to you at the moment. You could say, connect your positive there, and then whatever loads down here, you know, one load here, another load here, whatever you like, and then you just connect those to your negative, and then you press each button and it's sharing a connection on one end, but it's powering the load through the switch, the momentary switch, the button on the other. Or you could do it the other way. You could have the positives connected down here through your loads and the negative up there. Now, why would you do that? This allows you to hook up different voltages. You could have a five volt here and a 3.3 volt here and loads being driven by them. So you'd have your five volt connection connected to whatever load that's using five volts, and then it sinks into the negative there. And the same here, you could have a fan here, whatever you want, as long as it doesn't exceed the power rating of any of the switches, which have a decently high power rating because there's no electronic components in there, it's just metal touching metal. So it can sink as much power as it needs until you're physically melting the metal or the plastic on top, or the PCB around it, that sort of thing. So chances are, if you're not doing something industrial, you're not going to have a problem. But that's the beauty of this, is you can basically have four split connections on one side and a joined on the other. So the final bit I'll show you, since the soldering is uninteresting, under here it's just, I use solder bridges to connect them. A solder bridge is just where you melt a bunch of solder along a line, bridging between the dots. It uses a ton of solder, but sometimes it's easier to do than jumping wires. Long distance you want to use a jumper, of course. But I want to quickly show you how I mounted this. Basically, I just cut a piece of wood. This is pine wood. It's nice and soft. You could use balsa. Balsa can be too soft, but balsa you can, you know, much more easily cut. I actually ended up buying a jigsaw to do this. It was only 30 bucks, and it'll last me the rest of my life because I'm storing it inside, not in a garage. But anyway, I cut some wood, and then I got what are called machine screws. It's just regular screws, and the little packet, it's like a dollar for a, a big old plastic bag of them at the hardware store. So you get the screw that goes through, and that, you know, you drill a hole 
skull and then on this side you have a nut. Now you could use wood screws, you could hot glue it down, there's all kinds of different ways to do it, but the reason I chose this, so the reason I didn't use something like wood screws that have the thread in the wood is because I wanted to be able to adjust it, to redo it, and I didn't want to have to very carefully match the threads up anymore because if the threads get loose the screw doesn't hold anymore. So the threads actually are doing nothing in the wood, they're just for the nut to grab onto. But this allows me to position, reposition, have them at any height. And what I'm doing actually is I have little washers. This was a different plastic bag at the hardware store, but it was just as cheap, 36 for like a dollar and some change. So I use washers, if you can see the washers, under the board and the screw grabs onto the top. I could have used another washer on the top as well. And I may do that if I get the hole in the wrong place, but the washers actually act as risers. They lift the board up about a 16th of an inch or so, you know, a few millimeters, so that the board isn't being bent. Because if you just screw it down, because see under here, you're going to have solder dots where the leads of the pieces are. So this doesn't sit flush on the wood. So I used the washers under the board and the screw on the board, and it's basically pinched between the two, down onto the board, and then the nut. So, not counting the electronics, forget the board a second, but just the mounting, um, minus the cost of the tool, this is probably about 80 cents. You know, if you count how much wood it's using, how many screws and how much they cost, it's probably about 80 cents or so. Even the sandpaper, I got the little sandpaper to make it a little smooth after I cut it, and that stuff is not wearing out. I've used it on many pieces of wood now, and that sandpaper is lasting, what is it, uh, it's 3M whatever. Just get the stuff that's not super cheap. Do I have the package? I have no idea what this is. It just says 3MP220 on it. So take that for what you will. It's just, it's just sandpaper. But apparently it's well engineered because the grit is not wearing off. So pretty much the most expensive part was the tool. But like I said, the tool is going to last forever. I did try a handsaw. Feel free. Um, it was painful. I don't mean literally painful. I mean it was infuriating. I'm sure a handsaw is perfectly fine for cutting planks or something, but trying to do work like this with a big old handsaw is not great. So I recommend a jigsaw or go find your buddy with one. But the actual mounting is super cheap. And that's a breakout board. My other breakout board videos are going to be much shorter because I'm not going to explain everything I just did. I just think it's kind of a cool idea to make breakout boards. Something like this is going to be useful. Another Another one I did is a bunch of potentiometers. I've got output LEDs with adjustable brightness and that sort of thing. All these circuits, you know, switches with power inputs that I'm having to remake. That's the main reason to make a breakout board. But another reason is there are many projects. Even if I'm not going to reuse the circuit over and over and over, it's still good practice to make. And when you have it on just a nice piece of wood like this, or even loose, but you know, it's safer to have it on a nice non-conductive piece of wood. Just stack them on a shelf somewhere. You know, this thing this thing weighs such a trivial amount. Like I said, I'm using pine. It's a very soft wood. It's uh, almost no weight at all. This entire thing feels like it weighs about as much as this screwdriver. So, yeah. But enough belaboring the point. So that'll be all for now. Look forward to many more videos of me making breakout boards and using them in my circuits. Not all at once, of course. But while I go clean up this sawdust, I'll be seeing you.